On the screen, you'll see an image from 1940 touting battleships of the future. This same year, war planners in the United States were thinking about and preparing for a potential conflict with the Empire of Japan. The resultant war plan orange centered on that, the idea that the powerful, exquisite battleships of the Allied fleets would sail forth and crush the Japanese Navy, leading to a quick and decisive victory. Then we woke up on day two of the war on December 8th, 1941, and realized that almost all of our battleships were sitting on the bottom of Pearl Harbor, and the plan was invalid. But most of us know what happened next. The portfolio of options available to Admiral Nimitz and President Roosevelt were not constrained to the main plan, battleships. They had a head strategy in case the battleships were not the solution. A head strategy is a portfolio management technique to minimize risk in a primary asset class. A hedge takes a position in an asset or derivative that will thrive if the future does not bend toward the preeminence of the primary asset. I want you to think about our World War II force structure in terms of primary assets, battleships, and a head strategy, aircraft carriers and submarines. If we think of the U.S. Navy's order of battle as a portfolio investment of the taxpayers' dollars, then the order of battle of the United States Navy in 1941 was a primary investment in battleships. But, and this is critical, there was a substantial alternative investment in aircraft carriers and submarines that came to dominate the conflict over the next few years. The performance of these alternatives to the main plan eventually came to be regarded as the preeminent formation for naval warfare, and our force structure is still modeled on carrier strike groups and submarines 80 years later. But what if that doesn't work? If we think back to the pre-war period of World War II, the 20s and 30s, the dominating thought in naval warfare was that the battleships would sail west, win the war, and we would sign the treaty. And then on December 8, 1941, everything changed. But the hedge investment the United States Navy had made in carriers and submarines provided alternative when the future of the battleship was starkly evident in 1942. One might look at our 2021 force structure and see a diversified portfolio. And there is good reason for that perspective. We have aircraft carriers, submarines, surface combatants, and many types of aircraft in this impressive photo. These assets make a lot of sense for all the reasons that the battleships made sense at the time. And there is no definitive proof that this force structure is not ideally suited to the future warfighting requirements. But there is an equally accurate statement that this is not a diversified portfolio because all these assets share so many of the same characteristics. They are all large compared to their forebearers. They are all expensive to the point where the United States cannot afford the number of platforms our force stru structure assessments suggest we need. They are all multi-mission and therefore complex. All these platforms do many missions and the system of systems interaction to create these complex integrations drives up cost and manufacturing lead times if we critically need, need for structure surge capacity. They are all acquired on a requirements model that lags operational identification of needs by years, sometimes decades when you fold in construction span times for some of these complex capabilities. They are all difficult to modernize. The ability to update the systems aboard these platforms, even the software systems, still takes years to accomplish. So in this sense, it might be accurate to see this force structure as a prudent primary investment, but a single asset class of the large and the complex. Our adversaries have been closely watching us operate and fight in this formation for decades. If they discover a way to relegate the large and the complex to the fate of the battleships, then what is our hedge? If the primary asset of our fleet is the large and the complex, then there must be an alternative. But look around. We have demonstrations of alternatives, but no force structure built on a different set of principles, fully aligned to the worldview we discussed earlier. We need to critically ask ourselves, do we have an alternative that is bold and creative like SpaceX's boosters? Do we have digitally native formations organized around information and software, like ascendant digital companies controlling the global economy? Are we building to the processes and practices like the future defined by software as the new steel and data as the new oil would require? Is our interaction with industry an effective acquisition strategy aligned to the velocity of the digital age?